wanted to take you guys along to look at the modifications I have done to my LSLBE system to make it compatible with body armor. And, you know, it's already uh, good enough to work with body armor. You just throw it over the top of your plate carrier or your body armor, right? Not really. I actually uh, got a good amount of inspiration from the British PLCE system, their webbing system, or what they call belt kit. And uh, a lot of times you'll see them wearing their plate carriers over their actual webbing system, such as I am doing here, as you can see. So, uh, I don't have a pistol on me right now, but I can have a pistol. It would just be attached to my pants belt. And the magazine would actually be on my plate carrier. However, you'll notice that my plate carrier is slit. The reason for that is because of experience. In ex my experience, it is best to keep your plate carrier slick, especially if you are actually serving in a unit where you're actually uh, likely to have to stand watch or something, where you'd be in a stationary position for a certain amount of time standing or sitting. Doesn't matter. Having a lot of weight on you can still play problems, uh, play with your back, even at a young age. So. Uh, it can get tiring. So when I was in the military, I actually had a, my LBV, uh, which was Molly, and I just had all my stuff. I would just unclip it and take it off when I was on post or any time that I didn't really need to be wearing all that weight. Because attaching all this, just because you see Molly, doesn't mean that you need to fill up this space. So with that, with that said, let's go ahead and take this off, and I'll go ahead and lay it out, and I'll show you some of the modifications that I've done and discuss why and maybe some changes that I'll make and uh, stuff that I had to do just to kind of make a point for this video. First thing to talk about is the shoulder straps. These are LBV 88 enhanced shoulder straps and uh, I have the back part as well and it's just looped on the way it would if it was set up as an LBV 88. So the front here I obviously don't have the panels on. I have the LBE uh, front straps and I have 550 cord instead of the metal hooks and the knots are on the outside of the eyelets on these ammo pouches and it is split so it does have freedom of movement so it helps uh, to where it doesn't move the belt if I'm bending forward or or what have you so I'm not moving the belt as much and that's a really good modification to do so uh, I do have all the internal strands on this 550 cord as well so I am getting the full complement of uh, the 550 cords uh, capabilities as far as load bearing capacity. So I do have four ammo pouches on here. I did cut a, a frag, a, uh, a little frag grenade flap on there or a grenade flap or whatever you want to call it. I did cut uh, one off on this one just to help this fit a little tighter, a little bit better. And I could carry a total of 12 magazines. I don't have that on me right now, but I can and I have uh, before and it, it works out pretty well as far as low carry capacity, but it's unnecessary to have that all the time. So I have six magazines here. Obviously I have my dump pouch connected to my uh, grenade flaps and I have my gloves connected to my gr uh, grenade flap. And so uh, right here you'll see that everything is uh, I'm basically back as far as it can go. It won't even stand up straight and I have a lot of room to the front. This allows my legs a lot of mobility, right? So the way I'm doing this is I'm using the eyelets on the belt to actually stop these pouches from trying to move. So that should give you a better a better look at that. So let me just zoom in for a sec. So you can see the eyelets here are blocked or the eyelets are blocking the uh, ALS clips. The ALS clips are blocked by the eyelets. So that keeps everything crammed you know where I want it to be as I'm just using the eyelets to my advantage on blocking everything. So that's that. It's pretty simple. So, I do still like these ammo pouches. They are pretty intuitive to use, and uh, yeah, I appreciate their durability as well. You know, you know, the little plastic, uh, little plastic clips on them, you know, are kind of bashed for uh, feeling soft and everything. But this is, these two on this side are just accessory pouches. I have like a navigation pouch here and an IFAC here. Uh, which basically if I needed uh, ammo instead of you know accessories then if I need more ammo I would obviously move this stuff around or whatever and uh, substitute certain things in my sustainment pouches but I have two canteens uh, I don't have a need for a hydration bladder on my plate carrier and if I need a hydration uh, bladder then I'll just throw it in my backpack that's typically where I have them but in a fighting order, I'll, I'll just carry two canteens. It's not really that big of a deal, and it's keeping all the weight on my belt. 
So, why do I not have a butt pack and why do I have two saw pouches? Well, butt packs are typically kind of an odd beast. So, like I said, if I was going to carry ammunition over, uh, over like accessory, like having an IFAC here, and, and I would have to move this IFAC to one of these uh, pouches. And if I was to throw it in a butt pack, it would be jumbled up with a lot of other stuff and get mixed up. So, I have other things in here that could be considered a mission priority. Uh, where I don't want to have to fish through stuff in a butt pack and deal with it. Also, it keeps the profile nice and consistent, uh, having two saw pouches here. And, uh, you know, there's, there's options. You could have two, two of these ammo pouches in the back and then have one saw pouch or something like that. That can actually keep your profile pretty, con pretty nice and small, but uh, a lot of odds and ends can go into the ammo pouches and then you have a saw pouch for, you know, uh, for the bigger stuff. So, anyways, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, like here I have a sniper veil, which is something you would really put in a pack. Uh, so, like for reconnaissance load, this is kind of mirroring like a reconnaissance load. You're going to be using more navigational equipment than ammunition. Uh, so, you have your nav gear and your IFAC on standby, but you also have a sniper veil for possibly setting up an OPOP and screening your, having a screen to protect uh, visibility of your position. I have a water filter in here, not really necessary for reconnaissance, but it's good to have on your person. It's kind of an emergency kit, but weapons cleaning kit, cleaning rods, and a, a terry cloth, and a pillow pack of lubricant. Very small, uh, very uh, very lightweight stuff to have. The uh, cleaning rods really for like stuff cases and stuff. And then I have some face paint. I mean, you could put it forward if you wish. I actually have a booboo kit underneath my navigational gear in this front pouch, uh, just in case I get a cut so I don't have to take off anything and, or go into my IFAC. This is really for someone else to treat me or for major hemorrhaging in my mind. So, also I have things like 550 cord, electrical tape, Kim lights, and stuff. So, uh, it's basically odds and ends, but I am shoving it like a sniper veil in here to show that, you know, you can, you know, carry more stuff in here but you don't really need to, but yeah. In here I have a poncho and I have a bunch of MRE stuff, a main meal and uh, basically a, about 1,500 to 2,000 calories worth of stuff. And I still have a little bit of room in here. So, so you can actually fit a lot in these saw pouches. So that's why I have the saw pouches. So it's basically the low profile, the amount of room you can get with them. And basically this is kind of how the uh, the European webbing system is as like the British webbing system, what they call belt kit. So um, that's basically how it is. They have two canteen pouches, and then and then they have sustainment pouches, which are a little bit smaller but a little bit deeper uh, from what I've seen. And they have four mag pouches, but I think they're only double double magazine pouches, whereas these are triple. So, anyways. The one thing to be aware of is uh, with this modification and uh, with this specific setup, if I don't have uh, something like uh, this magazine uh, filled with like navigational gear um, and this one being IFAC gear and kind of weighing it down a little bit, this can kind of be off balance to, uh, to the left a little bit because this am ammo weighs more than uh, you know empty pouches or anything too lightweight. So um, balancing it out is actually a pretty good idea. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if if you want, you know, load up, you know, three mags here, three mags here, and turn this into an IFAC, this into a navigational pouch, whatever, or vice versa. It's up to you what you want to do with it. But I have my setup here. It's not really final, but it's an idea of how I'm going to use this come summertime. But uh, I'm not quite there yet, so I haven't seriously uh, gone out and plotted it. So. Uh, with all that said, uh, this is pretty much what I'm going to be dealing with. The only difference is what's going to go in these pouches and how it's going to be laid out individually or whatever. But this is pretty much my final setup as far as like how I'm going to use the LSLBE system. It's basically one, one system that can work for pretty much anything. There's really not much of a need for a bunch of different other systems. You can get into this for a pretty, pretty low price really. But uh, with all that said, I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and leave a comment below on any modifications you guys have done. I know there's a, some videos out there as far as modifications, and one thing that they have that I don't have is a sleeping mat. Uh, I'm going to actually get a sleeping mat, and hopefully that'll um, basically extend this belt out to give me more room in the front. So basically thicken up this area a bit to where I have to make this belt 
a little bit longer in order to um, basically accommodate it being a little fatter in here. So I'll have more uh, leg room, which is always good because the more you are putting the weight towards the back and away from the front, the more the more you're going to be able to carry the load better. But I'm really thankful that these LBV88 uh, shoulder straps do work really well with the LB front straps and that it all hooks in really nicely because this gives me a capability that I didn't really know if I was going to be able to get, but it's very comfortable and I'm able to carry a crap load of stuff. And I'm just thankful that it's separate from my plate carrier because I've had stuff on my plate carrier on like deployments and it can be very miserable to not have them separated. Uh, but from my experience, having your plate carrier or your body armor separated from your uh, fighting load is a very good thing. You don't want it all interconnected because there's going to be some times when you're just wearing your body armor like on post where you're just wearing your body armor and you're let, you can lay your gear down and have less weight on you. Anytime you can take all that weight off, it's going to be a good day. So with all that said, I appreciate you guys watching and leave me a comment below and you guys have a good one.